started recording. So, um, Mattia, we can start. Yep. Okay. So, uh, thank you everyone for attending today's lecture. Uh, as Francesco said, uh, uh, we are going to divide the lecture in two parts. In the first part, we are going to describe you uh, the specifications for the front end part of the project. Uh, and in the second part, we are going to deal with uh, a hands on lecture about the front end technology, mainly uh, CSS, HTML, and Bootstrap. Uh, uh, leaving uh, uh, the major topics of uh, uh, JavaScript to a second hands-on lecture. Mati. Uh, front end and back end. Okay. Okay. Uh, go on, Fra. Yes. Okay. So for the specification of the project, as you can see from uh, Francesco's slides, um, we are uh, basically requiring you uh, to take all the specification uh, as you have already uh, prepared them from the uh, design part of the project and then implement them. In particular, uh, we are going to ask you to create the, uh, basically one home page for the website that is almost free, so you can do whatever you want in that. Uh, two single topic pages with uh, the association uh, of the, uh, the presentation of the association and a contact as a, a web page. Uh, multiple topics in which you describe one web page for uh, uh, each service, person, and event. And we ask you to have at least two services, three person, and two events. Uh, so that we can uh, uh, then check uh, the um, the presence of the correct linking between the different pages. Then we are asking you to create a relevant relationship that are exactly the same relationship that you have designed uh, for the IDM part of the exam, the grouping and the multiple group. As for the grouping, uh, we ask you to have one page for each group and in the multiple group, one page for each instance of the multiple group. So, uh, uh, as, for, as for those of you who already understood the, the part of IDM, uh, should be quite clear, uh, but for those of you who still have doubt, uh, in this case, basically, we want you to have we want to have a page for each month uh, with the events of that month. Uh, I want to add I want to add a thing to this. Um, you can have a page uh, for uh, each month, but um, I was talking with Professor uh, Gazzotto before. You can also have uh, one single page with all the months divided and it, uh, it will be considered uh, valid uh, the same. Okay. Just uh, this note. Okay, the other slide. Okay, so how we are going to evaluate your project? We are going to give a score to your project uh, over 32 points. And these two points have been split between the technical correctness of the web page implementation, which means that you have implemented all the web pages that we asked you in the previous slide, plus a certain set of features that we will describe in the next slide. The score is not even. Uh, I mean, it's not. Ex uh, they are not, not graded exactly the same and then mediated, but the second part is still considered uh, very important uh, inside your project specification. And we will publish um, uh, a grid uh, with all the results and with all the um, scores that we will give to the single pages, to the relationship and to this other front end feature. We will provide you more details about uh, our evaluation criteria. Next. 
So these uh, extra uh, criteria are actually the responsivity of the website, uh, the structure of your folder, uh, an evaluation of the accessibility, as I was saying yesterday, about basically errors and contrast errors uh, inside your web page, the consistency, consistency with the IDM specification you provided inside your design documentation, and the usability of the, uh, of the website. For all the specifications of how we are going to evaluate this, uh, please refer to this document that we will publish uh, in the next days, uh, if I'm right, right, yeah. Stefan. Yeah, you're right. And uh, I want to add a uh, thing to this slide uh, that the part about uh, uh, consistency with IDM specification and usability is a part that uh, it's going to be evaluated by uh, in the design uh, part let's say, of the of the project. So uh, it will be evaluated by Professor Gazzotto uh, while the responsiveness, the structure and the accessibility, uh, it's related to our evaluation. Uh, we added these two last points here uh, because they are really important uh, and they are linked uh, with the front end part because uh, without the front end, we cannot see if the, the front end is consistent with the IDM specification. Uh, there are two questions, Mattia. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm reading them. We can Comment. answer to this question and then goes on. Okay, for the first question, we haven't, if we have embedded the multiple groups in nested introductory pages, it is okay to do only those introductory pages with the multiple group inside plus inside plus the page of the event by month? Uh, OK, according to uh, what I, uh, I, I think that it's, uh, you, you can do it. It's, yeah. it's possible. For, the second, the, for the second question instead, Professor Gazzotto has said that we can embed events by month in all events page. In, the, in that case, she said uh, that we can avoid repeating the whole list of events and just divide them by month. In that case, can we create one page for both the group and multiple group? Yes, you can do, Eleonora. Yes, uh, in this phase, uh, since you're working uh, on the still on the design document, uh, you are free to and you have also to provide the mock up. Um, there you are uh, free to um, to do this kind of uh, modifications and not to be strictly inside the pages that we are going to require. The important thing can, is that then uh, relationships are implemented, groups are implemented, multiple groups are implemented. Is there a reason why you are not allowed to use React? Uh, we will return on this later. Uh, so I think that we can continue with the presentation right now and then answer to Alejandro. OK, hey. Martin? Yes. OK, next slide. OK, in, in this slide, we are providing you what we expect as the structure of your web page, of your website, sorry. Uh, so we expect that you have a public folder where you have an index.html uh, and proper uh, folders to contain uh, CSS, JavaScript, pages, images, and so on and so forth. We are not going to evaluate if all the documents there are, uh, are actually used, if you are going to use them properly or not. As for the structure, we are just going to evaluate that you have provided a clear uh, structure of the, uh, of the code and of all the assets that you are going to use inside the pages, and that, that this structure is following uh, the standards uh, of the web technology. So this is a, uh, the standard that we assume you can, uh, you want to use. As for the uh, readme and package.json, uh, those are not mandatory. 
those are needed only in the case you use uh, uh, um, progressive applications. Since we are not requiring you to do progressive applications, you may uh, avoid them. But for all the rest, uh, please use this kind of structure. OK, and uh, last slide is about FAC. So we try to give you some uh, um, uh, answers to the, the question that we get most asked by the students inside years. And the first thing uh, is that you must develop all the web pages to get the top score. Of course, if you do not develop all of them, uh, you may still pass the exam, but for sure you will not get the best of the score. As for the connection with the database, we expect that all the pages that take dynamic content, so the single topic pages, sorry, the multiple topic pages, the groups and the multiple groups, uh, should load their content from a database, which also means that you have a single page uh, for all the multiple topics and that uh, the content is then changing. Whereas for a single topic page, uh, so home page, uh, contact form and association, we allow you, if you want, to make them uh, static so that the content is completely embedded inside uh, the HTML page. If, if you want to load them from the database, there is no, uh, no problem. Uh, we are not going to penalize you in any, uh, if any of the two solution is uh, present. Instead, if you load, the, if you have a content inside the page, for example, of the event that is static, that you are not loading it from the database, you have one page for each of the events, uh, we are not going to evaluate them uh, as uh, properly, uh, mm, properly made on a technical point of view. So they are not going to count uh, as uh, developed pages correctly inside your, your grade. As for the responsivity, uh, as I said yesterday, we are going to evaluate your um, uh, your uh, website if it is uh, accessible inside a small uh, smartphone, uh, the tablet, and the um, and the desktop. And for uh, tablet and smartphone, we are going to test both the portrait mode and uh, the uh, landscape mode. Of course, we are not going to use different devices as you are not required to have different devices to test your website. We are going to use uh, uh, the uh, developer tools in Google Chrome uh, that allows you to uh, resize uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the screen of the, uh, of the browser as if it was on uh, mobile devices. And in this, when we are going to evaluate this, we are also going to check that, for example, uh, the interactive elements can be interactable uh, by a human and also that we can read the text uh, as humans. So uh, please check all this stuff uh, when you are going to, uh, before uh, developing, um, sorry, before uh, giving, uh, giving us the code for the evaluation. As for external links, uh, uh, you can use external links uh, such as, for example, connecting to a fake uh, Facebook or Instagram page uh, inside, for example, the home page. However, due to avoid the accessibility errors, you need to create a link to a web page that actually exists and then disable the, uh, the link. In this way, it is, uh, it is not creating any accessible mistake. Otherwise, you are going to be penalized because of the accessible, uh, accessible error over an empty link. OK, so um, once we, we have evaluated, uh, we are not planning on making any oral examination. However, in specific cases, when we requ uh, require you to, uh, to come uh, to check the exam uh, and to prepare for an oral examination uh, because for 
the reason we notice that something is odd with your code, uh, we are uh, requiring that all the team members knows at least uh, how to recreate uh, basic elements uh, of all the different technologies of front end. So basically, every team member should know uh, basics of HTML, JavaScript, and, this, and CSS. Uh, no matter what you have done inside uh, the group for the project. So you can split your work as you like, but we assume that at the end of the project, all of you knows uh, all the topics. So that in this uh, form of uh, oral evaluation, we can ask you on any of the three topics and you are expected to answer them correctly. We are not allowing you to use uh, um, content management system uh, because, of course, you are going to uh, basically skip all the technical stuff uh, that you are required to do for the front end part because the content management system is going to do that for you. Uh, so, if you are going to use uh, WordPress, Joomla, or similar, uh, you will get an insufficient mark, uh, and this means that you are going to fail completely the, the exam, even if the other design and backend part uh, are sufficient. Should transitional act be pages? Um, do you, you remember that in IDM schema, you have transitional act, uh, and theoretically transition, transitional act uh, should be considered as a web page. Uh, however, uh, for the sake of the uh, of the development and for practical reasons also, uh, you are allowed to uh, encapsulate transitional act inside uh, the original web pages uh, as you like. So on this part, you may be uh, not compliant with the uh, uh, IDM, but this is the only part in which you are allowed to be not compliant with IDM schema you provided. And finally, uh, about the, uh, so what's going to happen if you are not consistent with the uh, your IDM schema? So what's going to happen is that you are just, uh, you are just required to submit a newer version of your design document in which you highlight uh, the differences that have been uh, created uh, to be co um, coherent between your implemented prototype and uh, the design part of the uh, of the code uh, of the exam. Sorry. So I see there are uh, other uh, questions. So first of all, about the use of React JS. Uh, we are not allowing you to use React.js or any other uh, JavaScript frameworks uh, or any other actual tool that we have not presented during the lecture uh, for uh, several reasons. Uh, the most important ones is that those uh, frameworks actually uh, um, add a lot of more um, um, higher level elements uh, that to be managed actually required you to be uh, an expert uh, inside the standard basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And since we cannot uh, afford uh, to prepare to present all these uh, topics inside this course for now, uh, we are we cannot give them as uh, required for the exam. Also, to go for a, for a framework you first of all need to be an expert with standards. Otherwise, you are going to make a lot of fuss and waste a lot of time in it. So we ask you that for the front end part, you stick to the uh, standard basic uh, technologies that you pre presented you during the lecture. And uh, another thing I want to add to this point is that also uh, for us that uh, we will provide you with uh, tutoring sessions, uh, having 
a set of uh, things to know, like for example, uh, Bootstrap, jQuery, and the basic of HTML, uh, CSS, and JavaScript allows us to follow you better uh, during tutoring sessions, because if uh, any of uh, you come to the tutoring with uh, who who uses uh, Java? Uh, who uses Angular? Who uses Vue? Uh, who uses React? Uh, it's uh, also difficult for us to give you uh, an help then. Uh, the current PIDM notation for transitional art embedded in pages. Uh, Actually, I not remember it now by heart. Uh, it should be inside the slides of Professor Garzotto, but I am not able to remember it by heart now. Uh, Fra, do you remember it? No, about this, no. Is it correct that we are not required to design the mobile version of the website this year? Actually, you're not. You're. You have never been required to design a different version of the website uh, for uh, for the mobile version. You are required to make a website that is responsive, so that you have one design, and and the desktop uh, view. Uh, Matti, you say scomparso. Okay. Secondi. Sorry. Uh, I was saying that uh, some, uh, one of your colleagues asked if, we, if you are uh, to confirm that you are not required to create a second version of the website for mobile. And my answer is that you, are, you have never been required to do so. You are required to create one single design and that design should be accessible both on the mobile and uh, on the desktop mode of the uh, uh, of your computer. So you basically design once and uh, access from multiple devices. This is the the, co the goal of responsibility. When describing a use case scenario where the user goes to, for example, all events page, do we need to provide a design in the small example for the page as well? Yes. Yes, you need to provide also that design in the small example. Uh, I don't know, Natalie. Uh, maybe she. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Professor has said one page for each group during the tutoring. I've uh, asked by mail, but she hasn't answered. One uh, each group. Yes. Yes, it is. This is what we uh, wrote in the second slide. Yes, uh, hello. Uh, but when I had uh, the tutoring here, uh, uh, I pointed to a part of the specification, uh, and in the specification, I mentioned that, uh, uh, like, uh, we have to create a one page group, one page for the groups, and etc. And uh, she said, no, no, the specification are not right, because I never meant each. And then uh, she hasn't answered the email, so I don't know because uh, uh, now I think that it's one for like for groups people. Like this. Uh, Eleonora, I, I didn't hear you very well, but uh, if I understood well uh, what you said, is that mm, there is a contradiction uh, between a. Uh, uh, what we said before and what we are seeing now. Can you hear me better? 
better now? Yeah, yeah, a little bit better. Okay. Uh, when I had the tutoring with Garzotto, and mm -hmm. I showed her uh, the specification she has published on DIP, she has said that uh, it was not one page for group, but it was one page for each group. But uh, these are the only specifications that we have. So I don't know if she was mistaken or something. I don't know. Okay, right now what we uh, what we are asking is one page for each group. So it means uh, one page that uh, collect all services, one page that collect all people, and one page that collect all events. Is it clear? I hope so. Um, uh, create a design uh, is more for at least. What are you reading, Mattia? Uh, uh, Eleonora, it's uh, as posted as a picture of the uh, specification where uh, it has been written. Create the design the small for at least one PDM page for a topic. One PDM page for a topic of kind, three introductory pages. However, Eleonora, this is for designing the small. Design the small and front-end evaluation are actually two different things. So you, design the small is just an example of the structure that you expect to have uh, of one of the uh, front of the uh, PDM pages. What we are discussing now is that you need then to create them uh, with the front end technology and you need to create one of uh, one for each because you cannot have one single group contain one single page containing all the information together it's it's a mess you cannot understand anything inside it yes of course the, uh, the works are linked but they are working on different uh, level If we'll design, if we'll design it, we'll do it since the beginning. Yeah, I know, I know, but there is a, um, an actual difference between what you need to design and what then you need to create. When you need to design things, you need to create a structure and that structure has to be valid uh, then for, for the implementation, but you actually do not need to design each pages because some of them share content and share structure. So you can have the same structure uh, that more or less goes into different implementation. That's why you're not required to do all the design the small pages, but just some of them. Uh, okay, we have a question of Elena Palombini. She said in the class for each kind of topic, if I'm not wrong. What? Sorry? No, no, this before, before. Regarding the PIDM for transitional acts embedded in page. Ah, sorry. I'm pretty sure that slides just mentioned the case uh, where there was a separate page for the transition art. Uh, maybe, but in any case, uh, just for the PDM on transitional act, follow the specification that you have received, uh, design them, 
and then when you need to implement them, you can avoid uh, these separated pages. Then, uh, what about using external scripts that provide some functionality, uh, for example, uh, anim, uh, anime.js? Um, I would say that this kind of uh, external scripts uh, are allowed because uh, they uh, it doesn't hide anything to the to the programmer and it doesn't create any layer of abstraction. Let's see, but um, let's say that we need to check it uh, inside your tutoring session. So when we when we are going to have a uh, tutoring session for front end part, we will see uh, the the, uh, the the scripts that you want to include. And then in that moment, we will uh, and decide if it's valid or not. Because actually, uh, there are so many different uh, possible scripts and things uh, outside in the world that it's very hard to make an absolute uh, blacklist of all of them. Yes, so, of course, if you are using an external tool uh, that we uh, didn't explain during lessons, uh, it's valid the same. Uh, what, what I was saying before uh, about uh, our help in tutoring. If you're using an external library and it's then difficult for us to help you if you have problem with this library. So uh, we suggest to use uh, tools explained during lecture and but in this case if you want to add other kind of uh, libraries uh, that just add functionalities and not uh, change the, let's say, paradigm of uh, coding, uh, you can do it. But of course, in tutoring, we will check uh, if they are valid libraries. Okay. We have more month. Okay, uh, using this structure is okay to develop using ASP.NET and we'll see. Okay, uh, this is uh, a part completely related to the to the. Um, I see that there is model script. Okay, did some MC pattern. I think, uh, what do you think, Mattia? We have to discuss this with uh, Professor Zakaria. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, see, I, I think that we have to discuss this structure. And also, uh, um, currently, uh, I don't know if uh, there are some strict uh, uh, requirements as the one that we are going to give you also for the backend part, uh, in the sense that, for example, you cannot use uh, different kind of backend, and you, for example, have to use just Node.js or uh, this other kind. I, uh, we have to uh, discuss this with Professor Zakaria and we will let you know. So, Mohamed, sorry, I, I will freeze uh, your question uh, for the moment. Uh, maybe uh, next week uh, in tutoring, uh, we can answer to, to this question to you, for you. Okay, and the, there are, um, are there any other question? Otherwise, uh, me and Mattia uh, can comment a little bit this part of tutoring, and then we can uh, start the end zone part. What do you think, Mattia? If they have no other question, for me it's fine. Okay. So.
Okay. It seems that there are no questions. So um, just uh, a few things to add about tutoring. Tutoring about front end part will start next week. And uh, we scheduled uh, tutoring on Wednesday and on Thursday. Uh, also during the afternoon because uh, there are lots of group. Uh, we are going to uh, schedule uh, your tutoring uh, in the same way that Professor Garzotto is doing uh, with her tutoring sessions. So we will publish a doodle and you can uh, set your uh, preference, your time preference in the doodle. Uh, then we will close the doodle and we will schedule uh, uh, the, the tutoring part. Um, since uh, this first tutoring uh, is just on the front end part and not in the back end because uh, you're still missing the, the back end part. Uh, tutoring is just 15 minutes and then uh, we will add other five minutes to also uh, have the time to manage also the back end part. So 15 minutes uh, for this week uh, and I think also next uh, next week. And uh, me and Mattia will work uh, on two separate rooms. So uh, what we ask to you is to then create a chat and to add me and Mattia in the chat. And then based on the schedule, uh, uh, one between me and Mattia will connect to the chat and we will discuss. Uh, I hope that this is clear for all. And uh, by the end of the week, uh, we will publish the doodle and uh, another thing we uh, we ask to you uh, is uh, to be um, when there is a group, uh, the next group uh, um, should be ready to in case that uh, the tutoring uh, uh, will not last 15 minutes, but just 10 or uh, five uh, if there is uh, nothing to to ask. And I think that uh, this can be a situation uh, Mm, that can be in uh, get can happen during also the the first week of tutoring because you have uh, already started to work on your side, so maybe you don't have uh, so many questions to to ask. Um, if uh, about tutoring, uh, let's write a question to to. Okay, I hope that uh, it's clear for all how tutoring will work. So me and Mattia will work in parallel uh, and not in the same uh, in the same chat as we are doing right now. So I see lots of thumbs up. Uh, so I I think that we can stop this recording and start another one about the end zone session. Yep, maybe it's better. So I would stop this recording.